This weekend brings us to the Coronation Pool and it is now called the Peter Hemingway Fitness and Leisure Center. This was uh, designed in 1968 and built in 1971. This is a Peter Hemingway uh, design and won a Massey Medal for Distinguished Architectural Design, one of the highest uh, awards you can get. And it houses a, uh, an Olympic pool. It also depicts the rolling landscape of the prairies and uh, it is absolutely stunning in person. If you get a chance to come to Edmonton, please check it out. It is gorgeous. The Peter Hemingway Fitness and Leisure Center. So he was born uh, in England. Um, he did train there. Uh, he did uh, do some army service in Africa. Uh, but eventually he, he ended up here. He definitely had a vision uh, when he came to Edmonton and, and the prairies. And that's what drew him here was the, the look, the feel, what the prairies are. Uh, he partnered with significant people that um, like um, Douglas Cardinal, uh, Clifford Weens, um, whom you may know as uh, out of Saskatchewan, actually has done some extremely significant landmark uh, buildings, but he also worked with Peter. Um, Doug's involvement um, personally had a lot of uh, impact on me. Uh, I spent a lot of years on his farm and in his sweats and whatnot, but that gave me uh, a really good perspective on uh, First Nations people. Yeah, for the rest of my life, still does. And I was just thinking of it the other day about uh, one of the punishments my father used to do is he'd uh, put a blank piece of paper down with a mechanical pencil and he'd have me draw a perfect O. Ends must meet. So he could, whoosh, whoosh, he'd do it, ends meeting was, and I could never do it. But the, I had to persist and I had to keep doing it. That circle, of course, in native world is hugely significant. So those things for Thanksgiving, that really came around for me. I thought about Doug. I thought about the, the nations, the First Nations people and having their moment now and, and that circle I used to have to complete. So now I think I might try harder to make those ends meet. First of all, Coronation Pool got a Governor General's Award in uh, 1970. Uh, it, it was called the Massey Medal back then. It was Canada's highest award for architecture. But he got two of them that year. The other one was for the Stanley Building up on the Kingsway. But um, so um, so so it, it was recognized nationally um, as having superior quality even 1970. Then, um, in 2013, I think it was, maybe 2012, 2013, um, I worked with uh, the city and uh, with the family to a certain degree, and we applied to have the uh, pool recognized for the, the, uh, an RAIC award. And the award we were applying for was the pre Judusium Siecle award for the finest buildings of the 20th century in Canada. And um, they awarded it. It was the only building that, that year. So uh, the pool has been recognized not only with the Massey Medal, but also with the RAIC Preview Dizium Siècle, the prize of the 20th century, um, uh, for being one of the finest uh, buildings of the 20th century. Um, and, you know, there's only a handful of buildings that have been, 
that have received this award. So um, yeah, that's I think that that's an indication that this building has really touched the, the minds of the Canadian public, you know, across across Canada, and um, and it, it is amazing that such a building was built in in its time. The they are glazed and they are angled. Uh, there's no upright window uh, in the structure that I can recall. And on the inside, there's a, a wood cantilever, almost a, I think it, almost like a reverse cantilever. Uh, but it's unique. Inside, you'll see the uh, the raw wood uh, and the pins and the wires um, holding that angle. And the and obviously the the windows do take that. It's and they're glazed, as you can see from the outside, which gives that copper-like effect. Uh, when you're inside, that's a glorious feeling. It's uh, it's awfully neat to watch a, a snowstorm and a hot summer day uh, from that perspective. Well, they would have been glue lamp beams, so um, they they, they uh, were, wouldn't be solid timbers. They would have been they would have been a laminated wood, which which was an industry that developed after the war. It's just light filled, and and also the um, the, the the swooping forms and the, the beautifully expressive structure that the timbers and then the, then the structural wires that connect the timbers, you know, um, it's a very expressive, uh, a very expressive structure, which actually was a feature of mid-century modernism where the structure was celebrated. You could actually see how buildings were built um, uh, quite often. Yeah, we, um, I don't recall who started the campaign to change the name. Um, and forgive me, um, a shame on me. But it, it led to the actual renaming of the pool. And we laugh because uh, Peter bumped the queen on that one. And that doesn't happen often. Um, it also put him in a position to be one of the only architects in North America to have at least three public buildings named after him. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, but that was significant at the time. You know, it's um, it's very brave. You know, um, not it was not rectilinear. Um, it was done without computers. You know, and we only, we think we can only do things like that with computers, but you you, you don't. You know, it was quite possible to do it without. And it was very brave, in a sense. Um, and that's where Peter Peter had a lot of um, courage to really take chances. And and unfortunately, um, <laughs> well, in this case, it was good. But um, taking chances, you know, if you've done something that's never been done before, you know, what are you doing to your client? <laughs> And in this case, in this case, it's worked out well. I mean, the building has had its, its issues and it's currently going through a process of restoration. Um, and they're going to replace the glass and, and bring it back to uh, its original appearance. It is, it's going to be connected to the new uh, velodrome um, that, um, that will be built just no, uh, adjacent to it. Um, and. Um, and it'll be part of Coronation Park. So, so it, it was quite significant to stroll around that pool, and I often did slowly. And I got lost. I have to admit, I got lost in the lines, and it impacted me for my entire life. I, I look at things not only as a ski racer taking a line down a hill, but everything I look at now, I look at with the flow of the line from top to bottom, and uh, it's a beautiful thing. I really appreciate having that. In this episode, I'd like to focus and spotlight the work of Tiffany Cuffley. Uh, an artist who works uh, with mid-century uh, shapes and expressions, designs. I saw her work at a friend's pop-up and I was so intrigued because they were small formats and I did not even realize that the woman does 
murals and has done so much work uh, in Calgary and uh, Banff, Montreal, Morocco, Vancouver, Ontario. You can see her work at all the UNAs, UNA Calgary, UNA Bridgeland, UNA 85th Street, UNA Banff. And uh, Tiffany's background is at Mount Royal University. Uh, she was a performance artist with Company of Rogues and was a professional ice skater for Disney on Ice. Tiffany draws inspiration from exploring design pattern and the geometry of movement and is currently focusing on large-scale mural work and scenic painting for film and theater. The shapes of sharp lines and soft curves is inspired by mid-century architecture and the geometry of physical movement. She is inspired by the subtleness and crispness of mid-century architecture. The color in her work is strongly influenced by both mid-century modern interior design and Memphis style design. As she constantly plays with the contrast of the two opposites. Pattern for her is deeply inspired by her former profession as a figure skater. She finds the balance between structural pattern and the perfect points at which to break the pattern and let shape move intuitively as the main goal in her practice as a muralist. So if you're interested in adding some mid-century uh, art to your home, whether it be a small piece or a feature wall, or maybe you want to put a mural outside of your business wall or your building, her website, tiffanylynnkuffley.com.